Watson. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, I'm pleased to speak on this piece of legislation, particularly after the last fortnight in Parliament when the question of parliamentary standards are up to scratch was on display for all to see. Um, it's also an important discussion to have when trust in politicians and indeed in our democracy is at a bit of a low. As a first-time crossbencher, uh, I feel that I've brought fresh eyes to the parliament. And while this legislation does not directly address behaviour in the chamber, that's the behaviour that is the most confronting as a newcomer and sets the tone for the rest of the work environment. The jeering, heckling and disrespect shown in the chamber is unlike any other work environment in the country. Now, this chamber should be a place for robust debate, but the culture demonstrated here is a relic of the past. Uh, as is the lack of accountability and standards in this place more broadly. The standards in this House should not be so markedly different from the rest of the workplaces all across Australia. If anything, we should be setting an example. And if we want our constituents to respect our parliament, we need to demonstrate that we are worthy of respect. And if we want our constituents to trust us, well, we need to earn their trust. Part of this means being transparent and open about misconduct in the parliamentary workplace and holding to account those who betray the trust and respect afforded to them. We also need to provide a safe and respectful workplace for our staff, just like any other workplace. And the sad reality is that this place does not have a good reputation. I interviewed a young woman about a job on my team, and she was hesitating about taking the job, and I asked her why. And she said she was quite worried um, because she had heard that Parliament House was a bit rapey. Now, it's absolutely horrific that this could be the reputation of uh, the centre of our lawmaking, and we must do better. Now, this bill is the final piece of reform coming out of the independent review into Commonwealth parliamentary workplaces in response to public outcry over toxic culture and poor behaviour in the Commonwealth Parliament. The response to the review, the Set the Standard report, was tabled in November 2021 and it contained 28 recommendations to ensure Commonwealth parliamentary workplaces are safe and respectful. Recommendation 21 was to establish clear and consistent codes of conduct. Recommendation 22 was to establish the Independent Parliamentary Standards Commission, which I'll call the IPSC, which would enforce those codes of conduct. And in November 2021, it was recommended that the codes and the IPSC should be Im implemented within 12 months. Well, the Parliamentary Behaviour Codes were developed by the Joint Select Committee on Parliamentary Standards and endorsed by both Houses of Parliament in February 2023, some time later. An independent parliamentary workplace support service was established and commenced in October 23. And today, some time later, we're debating th this bill that establishes the IPSC and determining whether this is an appropriate response to the recommendations in Set the Standard. So what did the report say? Well, the Set the Standard report says that the IPSC should make findings about misconduct, make recommendations on sanctions, and apply sanctions for a breach of the Code of Conduct for parliamentarians. It also says the IPSC should operate a fair, independent, confidential and transparent system to receive disclosures, complaints and appeals about misconduct. So I want to look at how this has been translated into legislation. Firstly, on the functions and powers of the IPSC. Well, the IPSC has been set up to provide an enforcement mechanism for the behaviour codes. Uh, it's set up as an impartial fact-finding body that investigates conduct issues that have been submitted to the Commission in writing if it's satisfied on reasonable grounds that there's sufficient evidence or information to justify doing so. Now, after investigation, the decision maker provides a draft report which includes preliminary findings, a summary of evidence and, where relevant, proposed recommendations and sanctions. The person who's subject to critical preliminary findings or proposed sanction then has an opportunity to respond before final sanctions are recommended. In the case of a serious breach finding, the IPSC will refer its findings to the Privileges Committee, which then considers the appropriate sanction and reports to the relevant House of Parliament with its recommendation. And a recommendation by the Privileges Committee will become public. 
Now, all of this seems a reasonably appropriate response to the Set the Standard report and the committee report. And I agree that it's important there's a division between the IPSC's role of investigations and proposing sanctions and the functions of policy setting and providing advice and support on behaviour standards. I support the structure of the IPSC that requires MOPS employees to have one allocated investigating commissioner and parliamentarians to require a panel of commissioners. And I think it's correct to have recommended sanctions communicated to the employer of a MOPS employee uh, found to have breached a behaviour code, while less serious sanctions can be imposed by the IPSC on parliamentarians. I also believe that serious sanctions against parliamentarians should be applied through the House by the Privileges Committee. But as I said at the outset, so much of the rebuilding of trust in this place requires the public to believe parliamentarians and their staff are acting within the highest standards. Secondly, is it fair, independent, confidential and transparent? Well, I want to address these requirements in reverse. Firstly, is it transparent? Transparency is essential to build trust. Now, this bill does not require full transparency. In fact, there's no need for the IPSC to ever share its fact-finding assessment nor its recommendations. In the case of serious misconduct, the IPSC assessment and recommendations are given to the Privileges Committee to determine a sanction and, rep and the report of the committee is tabled. So there is some transparency in the determination of sanctions for serious misconduct that goes through the Privileges Committee. There is no transparency for lesser breaches and limited transparency on serious misconduct based on the discretion of the committee. Now, a number of advocates are concerned about this lack of transparency. Fair Agenda thinks that as long as the complainant has given their consent, information about serious misconduct by parliamentarians should be made public as a matter of course, so the public have visibility on whether those recommendations have been implemented in full. Australian Democracy Network says that it's crucial that there's transparency to the public if a member of parliament violates the standards in the Code of Conduct. But there is definitely a conflict with the requirement of increased transparency balanced with the next requirement, that of confidentiality. Now, as far as employment law and HR are concerned, it makes complete sense that the processes of the IPSC, while they investigate and assess uh, and assess need to be confidential. Particularly for MOPS employees or for less serious allegations, the investigation and the outcome or sanction should be treated like an HR issue is treated in the commercial sector. This bill keeps non-serious allegations confidential but includes limited provision for a commissioner or commissioners to make public statements regarding conduct issues. And a public statement may also be made by the responsible commissioner where a parliamentarian uh, decision panel imposes a sanction on a parliamentarian in, in limited circumstances. So we're finding that balance between maintaining MOPS employee non-serious breaches as confidential employee management procedures and allowing the public to bear witness to serious or endemic conduct issues. Now, my preference is probably for a bit more transparency, but I can see that this is a difficult balance to find, and I think that we can achieve the, the desired purpose in its current form. Um, next, is it independent? Well, some have argued that the IPSC, as an independent body, should have final say on all sanctions, and the Privileges Committee should not be permitted to impose sanctions on MPs. But there is a problem with this line of argument. MPs are, by, their nature, by nature of their election, in a different employment arrangement than others employed under the MOPS Act. MPs have, in effect, been employed by their electorate, and the sanctioning by an administrative body is imposing restrictions on a representative that doesn't report to that body. So I'm actually happy with the balance found on this. The Procedure Committee is probably the appropriate body to do the ultimate sanctioning, but the proof will be in the pudding. And lastly, is it fair? Well, the final requirement from Set the Standard is to make sure the process is fair, which is probably the crux of the argument. And the premise is clear. MPs and employees must abide by the code of conduct. MPs and employees must have a standard of behaviour that's appropriate for their position. And we cannot accept lower standards of behaviour in Parliament than we would expect anywhere else. So is it fair that investigations and recommendations are confidential and that MPs are sanctioned only by their peers? Well, the public demands more from politicians than it has in the past. We definitely need to do better. 
And we have the op opportunity to use this to make sure that we can reform the way this place operates. So while I think there are likely to be future discussions about fairness, this is huge progress and I'm really pleased to see this bill. I do support the amendment put by the member for Wentworth that would make the, the, um, this standard apply in this house as well. It's the behaviour in this house that people see. It's that behaviour that we are judged by, by not only the public, but by the, also by the school children that come in and observe us. And I think it's really important that, that there is a high standard of behaviour in this house as well as in the building more broadly. Um, so this piece of legislation could have gone further, but it is a huge and necessary step up, and I will support it. It's arguably fair, independent, and finds a balance between being confidential and transparent, even if it's not exactly the balance that I might have preferred. So I commend this bill to the House.